In today's episode, you'll learn how to make delicious kosher beer braised short ribs using our Prairie Street Prime's USDA Prime Beef short ribs and these fresh ingredients. You see this meat coming apart like this? This is so good. Welcome to Prairie Street Prime's Culinary Kitchen. I'm Chef D. Arthur, your guest chef for today, and I'm so excited to be joining you. A little bit about me. I am from Memphis, Tennessee, born and raised, and I've been a chef for the last 10 years now. I travel the world for my clients, NBA clients, entertainers, politicians, business people, doing personal chef work all around this country. So I'm so excited to be in this kitchen with you today, cooking up some amazing beer braised short rib. Again, I'm from Memphis, so I know my way around a rib, and I'm so excited to be working with such a quality cut of meat to make a dish that I love so, so, so much. Let's hop right into it. So we're gonna start off today by cutting up our aromatics. I'm gonna start off with my carrots, and I'm just going with nice carrot chunks here. There we go. Two carrots to do the trick for this dish. Next, we're gonna move on to our celery. Again, nice, large chunks our celery here. Kind of like you're making a soup. If you've had like a chicken noodle soup and you've seen those big carrots and those big onions and those big celery chunks in there, we want that kind of vibe, all right? Next, we're moving on to our leek, all right? So just a few off the top. Again, we don't mind these being large and in charge, so that's enough from that, the top there. And the rest we're gonna bring from the bottom. Just a little bit there. Because these are so round, you might cut these up a little bit further, but not too much. Just maybe cut it in half once, get it in our bowl. All right, so we got our carrot, we have our celery, we have our leeks, and last but not least with our aromatics, we have our sweet purple onion. Normally we would dice these up, but we're going for large chunks, so I'm just gonna hit it like this. Nice, large, chunks. Take my knife this way. Nice, large chunks. Boom. Just like that. All right. Just that easy. Just that fast. Our vegetables are cut up. So next, we're going to move on to our tomatoes. I'm using the Roma tomatoes that I have on hand. I'm going to take the tips off there. I'm just going to dice those up really quickly. Again, nice, hearty, girthy chunks there. One tomato to go. Right, so we got our tomatoes going. We got our mise en place with our vegetables and our aromatics. Next, we wanna move on to the superstar of the situation, the meat, all right? So we're gonna start off by sauteing it, and then we're gonna add our liquids by braising it and pressure cook it the rest of the way, all right? So first we're gonna take our lid off. So it's been warming for about two minutes now on saute. Now I'm gonna season up my meat and get it right inside of there, all right? So we're starting with our bone-in short rib. I like short rib because Technically, it's the shortest rib. You know, it's, it's literally what it sounds like. It's the shortest rib of the beef. Um, and it's not the most tender. And what our pressure cooker is gonna do is take a not so tender piece of meat and make it tender. It's popular cooking format is braising because braising helps to make it tender, all right? And so all a quality piece of meat like this needs is salt and pepper. If the meat is good and it's good quality, all you need is salt and pepper. And we wanna make sure that we season all of the sides with this salt and pepper. So it takes some time to do that. If you're following with me at home, salt, pepper, all four sides, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and drop a little bit of my vegetable oil into my pressure cooker, all right? And so for the sake of caramelizing my short rib, I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown sugar to my oil. That's gonna brown my oil up just a little bit and it's gonna give a little bit of sweet taste to my short rib. Mm. So you wanna watch this because that sugar that I just added can very, very quickly burn, and we don't want it to burn. We're just trying to get a nice little color so that when we add our meat, it can start caramelizing, all right? The next thing I'm gonna do 
is to take that short rib and I'm just gonna dip it in flour and I wanna make sure that flour hits all sides. And what that all purpose flour is gonna do is going to help thicken up my short ribs. Cause in just a moment, I'm gonna add some beer to it. I'm gonna add some beef stock to it. And this flour is gonna help thicken that sauce up. All right, so one short rib in, second short rib, flour, all four sides. Get in there. Two, last short rib, flour, all four sides and the ends and the tips. Anywhere that's exposed, let's get a little flour on it. It's in there, all right? So now we wanna just take a second and we wanna saute that in our oil and our brown sugar on all of its sides. And then we're gonna take those out and get our aromatics in. So we're cooking it for about one to two minutes on each side until the flour gets nice and golden brown. We don't wanna overcook it though, because if you do, you're overcooking the little bit of sugar that you put in there to help caramelize and you're overcooking the flour and that's not what we wanna do, all right? So just about one to two minutes on each side until it's nice golden brown. All right, so let's take a look here. Side one, looking great. Let's get that turned over. Side two, looking great. This last one, <laughs> also looking great, all right? So we got all three of those flipped, but once we take this short rib out, and we add our vegetables in, and then we add our beer. That beer is going to deglaze all of that stuff at the bottom and just help bring the flavor out into the vegetables. It's going to smell so good in here. My kitchen, your kitchen, once you do that part, ugh, the smell alone is going to make you hungry. I'm going to take my short rib out and put it to the side here. All right, so next I'm going to take about a tablespoon of olive oil and put it in here again. And now I'm going to add all of those beautiful vegetables that we chopped earlier. Do you hear that sound? All right, so we're stirring these vegetables up. Normally when you're sauteing up aromatics or you're cooking a lot of vegetables and you're adding your garlic, you always wanna add your garlic at the very, very, very last minute because garlic burns very quickly, but I'm keeping my garlic in whole cloves. When I'm braising foods and I'm stewing foods, I love to keep my garlic whole. I think it brings out way more flavor. I think that um, if you're a person who's into garlic, you can just eat those garlic bulbs by itself inside of the dish. Um, you can, if you don't like garlic, you can just easily go in and pull them out. It's just so many different benefits to keeping them whole. And the cool part is they don't burn as fast when you keep them whole. So I can go ahead and toss my garlic in now with my other vegetables. And while I'm stirring, I'm trying to scrape all of those little bits off the bottom. All of that flour, all of that, those scrapings from when my short rib was sauteing, I'm scraping all of it up and I'm stirring it right into these vegetables. And so I'm gonna let this go for a few more seconds. And after I let this go for a few more seconds, the next step is beer. The beer is gonna help me to deglaze my pan. So anything that I could scrape off the bottom myself and get into these vegetables, the beer is gonna do it the rest of the way. So my vegetables are getting nice and tender in here and leaving a little of the drippings at the bottom. So it's now time for me to do my favorite part, add the beer and deglaze. All right, I'm gonna go with about a cup of beer. So I'm just gonna let this cook for a second with just the beer before I add anything else. As you can see, there's already a nice simmer going on inside of there. Now we're gonna eyeball about two cups of beef broth into our dish. All right. And remember those tomatoes we cut up? All right, that's coming up to a boil. Once that gets nice and simmery, we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. All right, so my beer, my beef broth, my aromatics, my garlic, all of that has come into a nice boil. And so now I'm gonna add in my good friend's bay leaves here. 
bit of salt. And we want to salt this liberally because this is where a lot of your flavor is going to come from. Pepper, fresh black pepper, as much as you desire. A couple of pinches there. Dijon mustard. I'm going to put in about a tablespoon or two of Dijon mustard. And the reason I'm going to do that is it's going to help emulsify this dish. And what that basically means is it's going to bring it all together. It's going to marry the dish. It's going to take all of these different ingredients and just make them make sense together. All right. So it's going to add a little bit of that. Also, there's a nice amount of sodium inside of mustard. So it's just going to add a little bit of flavor and sodium to the dish as well. All right. And now in go the short rib. And I'm so happy that I can still see the crust from that flour because now I know that this is going to help thicken up this broth. It's just going to, that beer and that, that beef broth, when the flour hits it as it cooks down in this pressure cooker, it's going to help it thicken up as it cooks. Last but not least, we have some fresh thyme here. We're just going to throw a couple of sprigs of that on top. We're gonna switch from saute, which got us up to this bowl and got us to where we are so far. And we're just gonna cut this off because we wanna pressure cook it the rest of the way. But I wanna show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this off. Second thing, I'm gonna put my lid back on. And when you put your lid on, you wanna make sure that it's sealed. And you'll know it's sealed because you'll hear that noise. So once our lid is safely on and we make sure that our vent is unsealed, we now go in and hit the meat and stew button. That's gonna add 35 to 45 minutes to the clock. And so what you do from here on out is sit around and wait for your short rib to get ready. As you can see, the red button is down. That means it's time to eat. Everything is ready to go, so let's see. Oh my gosh, do you smell that? I do. I don't know if you do, but I do. It's nice broth. It's got nice and thick from this flour. It's given lots of vegetables, like a hearty soup almost. And our short rib looks amazing, all right? Let's get this plated up. Oh my God, this smells so good. I can't wait to try it. And this short rib is falling off of the bone. All right, take the stem out. Okay, all righty. All right, so here we have it. Beer braised short rib. We use beer, we use beef broth, onions, carrots, leeks. The best cut of short rib from Prairie Street Prime. I'm so excited to dive in to see what this tastes like. Let's do it. You see this meat coming apart like this? Who says the short rib can't be tender? All right. <laughs> this is so good. Yo, if you want to make this amazing dish, if you're following along at home, if you want to tell a friend about it, if you want to impress somebody and make it for a dinner party, if you want to make it on a date one night, please go to prairiestreetprime.com and follow this recipe and go to YouTube, like, subscribe, follow, hit the bell. It's so many great recipes. We got a lot coming your way. This is delicious. You don't want to miss out. Coming up next on the Prairie Street Prime Culinary Kitchen channel, you'll learn how to make delicious kosher braised brisket. We've got beautiful marbling. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Mm. Great food is both great method and great product. We showed you the method here today. Now it's your turn to go out and get the product. Head over to prairiestreetprime.com to get some of the best kosher meat that you will ever experience. Please make sure to subscribe, like, and share. And if you'd like to stay abreast of our weekly content, please click the notification bell to become a part of our culinary community.